Welcome to this edition of Video Drone by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to take a look at these. So I had ordered some uh, knockoff phantom legs. Actually, these are a little bit taller, I guess, than the stock phantom legs. And the idea is to install them on the SEMA 8. So one of the things you might remember in a prior video, we did the camera uh, build. And uh, this has come out very good. I, I, I like it, really enjoy this. Uh, however, it, the, it, it does clear in the standard landing legs, but it, you know, as you can see from the landing legs here, I mean, they take a lot of abuse. And this camera is very close and that they are flexible and it does bounce on the ground. So I wanted to give it a little bit more clearance. And I wasn't sure if the um, phantom legs would work. It seems to be from the advertising that they will and I've seen a couple other things but it's not been very clear so I wanted to do this video to make it absolutely clear so if you're thinking about uh, changing it out for the phantom legs uh, which I also have a link below to this um, uh, you know you'll know so why oh, I end up guessing so I'm gonna go ahead do a quick time-lapse of me installing the legs or at least trying to and I'll come back and uh, at the end of the time-lapse and let you know what I think Okay, so we got the legs on now um, a little bit. So the screws that are actually more so bolts, these are hex head screws that come with it, are larger. They, they won't go into the, the SEMA holes. Um, the, um, the, it looks like these are like about a number four and these are more like about a number two. Uh, the piece is, is the hole size is real close to the size of the, the SEMA screws. So if I, if I held down on the copter and I yanked on this, I would pull, I would pull it through. For the time being, I, I mean, you can take and shake it and it, 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 I think it's perfectly fine at this level. I am going to um, probably either 3D printer, laser cut some small shims or get some... Um, uh, maybe a little bit longer number two screws I, I have some and uh, with uh, wider heads and actually put those in let's actually take a look at that that's actually a good idea okay so I've got some of these um, some, uh, longer I think they're longer uh, number two hex heads so I'm gonna pull out um, one of these and let's see so so here's the SEMA screw, and you know this is tapered to be self-tapping where this, this one isn't. So I'm this one might go in the hole. Let's see if I get so lucky. No, that won't fit. It, if I drilled it out a little bit, it, it would fit, and I think that's what I'm going to have to end up doing but for right now I'm just going to put these uh, these back in but the the gear does line up so uh, that was the most important piece and and these screws do catch and uh, for the short run they will work because the, what happens is it does pull back and does tighten down on here but again if you put a lot of torque now the other thing is they do come with pads uh, actually, it looks like uh, enough to do it twice over. Those like eight sets of pads that go in here. I'm not going to put those in in because what I am thinking about doing is these are these are about 110. Now I can print up to about 200 millimeters, so that's going to be about from the end of this ruler 
to about the end of my finger. So I can make extended landing pads for this on my 3D printer. And I think that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to design it so what happens is I'm going to have uh, squares that are slightly smaller than this offset at this space with a tube that runs through it um, that goes out to about 200 millimeters. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to epoxy them to the base of these to give myself more extension because one of the, the, the challenges, because we now make it higher, see how it, it becomes more tippy. So these are, right now, you can see I need to clean it. It's mowed some grass. You know, because right now these are about 130 millimeters uh, wide. Am I getting that in frame? Yep. So these are about 130, so I want to take them out to 200, so that's adding another 70 millimeters, so that's how much I'm going to add to each side, so about 35 to each side, so, um, you know, it'll come out to, to about this far uh, on, on, with, with the extra legs. So it should actually be far less tippy. Uh, I might even be, be on the tarantula, if I print them diagonally, be able to go a little bit above uh, 200, maybe even get up to 210. So I'm going to give that a try, but that's for the next video. So the piece is, yes, these do fit. I think these were like six bucks. Um, I think it was a great six bucks spent uh, because look at how much clearance I get for the camera now. Because remember before with these legs on here, the camera was almost touching the ground. Now I've got some really good clearance. And if we take a look here, make sure I, I'm getting this in frame. So I'm about, I have about almost around 90 millimeters of clearance to the camera. So I could actually even add probably a small gimbal or jello mount or something like that on here and get away with it and still have plenty of clearance. So I'm very happy with uh, how this turned out. It also looks very cool too, it's very DJI-esque, uh, if you will. So, uh, hey. If you found this interesting, if you were thinking about adding these legs to your uh, X8, hey, they work. They look great. So thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Any comments, hit me up below. Cheers. Cheers.